During the first few seconds of any elevator ride, you've probably noticed that your knees buckle. And the reason that your knees buckle is because your body is responding to an increase in your apparent weight. And in this session, what we're going to do is talk about what apparent weight is and how you can actually measure it. So for example, once you hit the up button, the elevator is going to begin to accelerate in the upward direction. And let's assume that this elevator accelerates at a rate of 2 meters per second squared, which is about the average rate an elevator accelerates at. Now what's going to happen is your velocity is going to change in the upward direction. That is, the elevator is going to start accelerating you, speeding you up. The elevator has to apply a force on you by Newton's first law to cause you to change your state of motion. So the elevator has to apply a force on you in the upward direction to cause you to change your velocity or speed up. Now the elevator does not continuously accelerate until it gets to its destination floor. So what happens along this path is the elevator stops accelerating or has an acceleration of zero meters per second, yet you continue to move in the upward direction by your own inertia. That is, you still have velocity in the upward direction. And then the elevator begins to slow down or decelerate as it approaches your destination floor. And in this case, let's assume that acceleration is negative two meters per second per second. Yet, even though the elevator is slowing down, you still have velocity in the upward direction. All right, so now notice a few things I didn't specify in the beginning. We're going to use the upward direction as our positive y-axis. So you're going to be at first accelerating in the upward direction in the positive y direction. And then once you start approaching your destination floor, you're, the elevator is going to start slowing down. And your velocity is still going to be in the upward direction, which I'll indicate with a vector pointing in the upward or positive y direction. Now in this problem, what I want to do first is examine this case down here. Why does your weight appear to increase? And we're going to apply Newton's second law to figure that out. And to make this calculation, let's assume that if you were to step on your bathroom scale, so you're far away from any elevator and you just step on a bathroom scale, you have a weight or you record or measure your weight as 180 pounds. Now if you were to use this relationship that says weight equals mass times the gravitational acceleration, you'd be able to first convert this over to newtons, which works out to be 801 newtons, and then you'd be able to plug this value into this uh, relationship, and you would be able to figure out that your mass is equal to 81.7 kilograms. And we did this out in another video, if you need to reference that video again to see how this calculation was performed. But we're going to use this mass, the mass of a person with a weight of 180 pounds, to try to figure out how much their weight appears to increase as the elevator applies a force and accelerates them. So remember, forces cause objects to speed up, that is accelerate, change their state of motion. All right, so the first thing that you need to do to start solving this problem is draw a free body diagram. Now I'm going to represent the this person in the elevator as this dot to draw, to draw a free body diagram. Now there are two forces acting on this person. This person is here on Earth, so gravity is pulling them towards the Earth, or in the downward direction, and we'll call that weight due to gravity. And then the and then the elevator has to apply a force in the upward direction. Literally, the elevator has to push them in the upward direction to change their velocity, to accelerate them. And off to the side, I'm just going to draw an acceleration vector to indicate the direction in which this person is going to be accelerated by an outside force. So there's going to be this net force pushing them in the upward direction, which we can call F net. And to give you an indication of what this force would look like, if I were to draw these vectors side by side, that is not in a free body diagram, but just do some vector addition, if this is my normal force vector, and if I draw the tail of the weight force vector right alongside of it, the net force would be the vector that goes from this point to this point. So this would be the net force acting on this person as they're accelerated. This is the force that the elevator has to push up on this person to cause them to change their state of motion. And in this case, this is going to equal to the product mass times acceleration. So now I'm going to use Newton's second law to figure out what the net force acting on this person is. So recall that Newton's second law says that if you add up the forces acting on a person, it's going to equal the mass of the person times the acceleration of the person. Now in this case, there are two forces acting on this person. There's the normal force, which is pushing this person in the upward direction. That's the elevator pushing this person in the upward direction. And the weight force, which I subtract because the weight force is in the downward direction. This is going to equal the product mass times acceleration. Now this term right here, this normal force, this term right here, which the normal force, this is what we can call the apparent weight. This is how much 
you appear to weigh as you're accelerated by the elevator, that is, as the elevator pushes on you. This is sometimes just called the gravitational weight. Usually when we're not thinking about what happens when you're accelerated by an outside force, we usually just call this the weight. But in this case, I want to distinguish apparent weight from gravitational weight, because apparent weight is how much you appear to weigh as you're accelerated by an outside force. In this ma term, this mass times acceleration term, represents the force required to change your state of motion. So this is the magnitude of the force of the force required to change your state of motion. So now I'm going to begin to work with this equation. And so to begin, I'm just going to rewrite this equation as the normal force minus the weight equals ma, mass times acceleration. Now I'm trying to solve this equation for the normal force because I want to find the apparent weight of this person. That is, person in this elevator, we're standing on a scale. This normal force would represent the number or the weight represented on that scale. So I'm going to solve this equation for this value. And to do that, what I need to do is I need to add the weight force to both sides to isolate this variable. And when I do that, I get the normal force equals mass times acceleration plus their gravitational weight. Now we already talked about a relationship between the gravitational weight and mass. And we said that weight is equivalent to the mass of an object times the gravitational acceleration of an object. So what I'm going to do next is where I see this term, I'm going to make this substitution into that term to simplify this problem. And when I do that, I get mass times acceleration plus weight, which is equivalent to mass times the gravitational acceleration. And now in this case, I have a common term. There's a mass term in both one of these products. So I'm going to factor that term out. And when you do that, you get mass times acceleration plus the gravitational acceleration. So this is the acceleration of the elevator. And again, this equals the normal force. And this equation, which I just derived, tells me what the weight of this person appears to be as they're accelerated by an outside force. So now let's figure out the magnitude of this force. And to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to plug in the values that we know. So in this case, we said the mass of this person was 81.7 kilograms. We said that the elevator began to accelerate at a rate of 2 meters per second per second, or 2 meters per second squared. We know the gravitational acceleration here on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to begin to simplify this to calculate the normal force. So this is again going to be 81.7 kilograms times 2 plus 9.8 is 11.8 meters per second squared. And when you do this number out, when you multiply 81.7 kilograms times 11.8 meters per second, you get a value of 964 newtons. Remember, a kilogram times a meter per second squared is a unit of a newton. And this is how much you appear to weigh as the elevator accelerates you. So to get an idea of how great this force actually is, let's just convert this over to units of pounds. So 964. Newtons, and what you're going to do is you're going to convert that over to pounds. So you know 4.45 newtons is equivalent to one pound. And notice this unit of newton cancels out with this unit of newton. And when you do that, you should get a value of 216.6 pounds. So your weight appears to increase dramatically. And that's why your knees buckle, because your body is responding to this apparent increase in weight. Now to figure out how much your weight appears to increase, that is give it some actual value, you know that your weight has increased, or your apparent weight has increased to 216 pounds. When you're not being accelerated by an outside force, you normally weigh 180 pounds. And the difference in these two forces is how much your weight appears to increase. And in this case, this works out to be 36.6 pounds. So while that elevator is accelerating you, your weight appears to increase by 36.6 pounds. And that's why your knees buckle because your body is not prepared to respond to a sudden increase in 36.6 pounds.